Hello, and welcome once again to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by dentalwebcontent.com and New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated. Along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our podcast once again, and we are so happy to be with you. Mark, how are you doing out there on the East Coast? I'm doing fine. It's March, I don't know, 19th, and it's still 40 degrees. So (laughs) we haven't quite had spring yet. We're supposed to get another nor'easter like tomorrow and the next day. So whatever. We'll see. All of a sudden, it'll be 80 degrees and I'll be mowing my grass. So. <laughs> yeah, you can put away the snowblower for the it's, season again. That's right. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Out here, we've never heard of snowblower. What, what's that I mean, mean? I know, I know. It would create too much dust. Anyway, uh, we uh, our last podcast, uh, we touched on uh, implants and how to promote um, that particular niche. And uh, we thought we'd kind of continue along in that vein with some other ideas regarding uh, this implant niche. Right, Mark? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, we have, a I don't know, a couple thousand downloads and and, uh, this one happened to be uh, quite popular. So we went down the list of the things we talked about last week in our podcast and we figured, you know what? why don't we just continue on in more detail with all the things that we discussed last week? Because clearly there's an interest out there among dentists on how to promote dental implants. Um, We as a company promote, uh, I'm not going to say primarily, but I'll say, well, yeah, no, over 50% of our work is, you know, promoting the benefits of dentistry to the top half of the dental market in the five countries we work in for the purposes of capturing more than their fair share of good quality new patients from whatever market they're in. I mean, that's basically the probably 60, 65% of our, our work. The other 30, 35% is niche marketing and dental implants and the benefits of dental implants are a niche in dentistry. Actually, a very popular one, um, and one that uh, it's really not that difficult to promote. You just have to, uh, well, you have to budget it correctly, and you have to apply that budget correctly. It's just like anything else. Yeah, and you have to target it correctly, too. Yeah, yeah. So, last week, we started off talking about um, you know, what to say, and we talked about um, you know, all the different benefits of dental implants. And we listed a few, right? We listed uh, um, replacing missing teeth, anchoring dentures, right? We talked about the vignettes that you can build. You don't have to talk about a story. You don't have to tell, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a manual. It, it, you don't have to have a video of a bloody implant site right? Uh, In your, in your advertising, Um, you don't actually don't even have to have a picture other than maybe a testimonial picture from one of your patients who was very happy um, with their implant. And um, it took less time and less effort. And there was much less pain than they ever thought. And maybe that's the only picture you ever need because it's very difficult. Promoting implants is, it has its, uh, it has its challenges. It's very difficult or impossible, actually, to give a consumer the before and after. Yeah. Because the after <laughs> looks like their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then it, and if you get sucked into giving them the before then you have to explain how you got to the after. Right. That's that's where you get those gross pictures. And even if you make a cartoon out of it with a little beaver and an elephant, it doesn't matter. It still looks like somebody's screwing something into my jawbone. Right? Yeah, nobody gets 
up in the morning and, and wants and says to themselves, I, th- I think I'm going to go get a titanium screw put in my jaw today. Nobody I'm really looking forward ever. to that. Right, exactly. So <laughs> said nobody ever. <laughs> right. So, so let's, let's all agree that promoting dental implants has its challenges. It's, it's, you can't, unless you're in a group of dentists, you can't really impress anyone with its function or its aesthetics before versus its function or aesthetics after. Not in an advertisement, not in a vignette, not on a television, not on your website, not anywhere. I mean, you just can't, right? So you're, you're, I'm not going to say you're limited, but you are more limited than you are, say, with ortho, right? Or white. Yeah. Okay. Or whitening. Or, or cosmetics. Yeah. Right. But, well, you know, here's another one sedation. It's very difficult to take a picture of sedation. Yeah. But there's no, okay, I was awake, now I'm asleep. Uh, <laughs> right. So, so promoting implants does have its challenges, which means the word, it, it just gives more importance to the other ways or the other um, pieces of an, of an advertising uh, puzzle. So you can't really use too many pictures, but you can use pictures of patients. You can have testimonials. Those are awesome. In many cases, those are better, right, than just showing the difference between a missing tooth and a tooth that's now reappeared. Um, You can talk about the many benefits. We touched on that in part one. Uh, you can also combine those benefits. There's uh, cosmetic dentures. There's a brand name for those. Um, you can com- yeah. you can combine it with the uh, uh, sedation. You can combine it with same day dentistry. You can combine it all over the place. Uh, and again, you don't need to have pictures of your actual work. You can just simply have testimonial. When you line up your advertising and you begin to build it, whether it's your webpage or your mailer, whatever you're building, you would have a testimonial of a patient who just needed to have uh, their missing, uh, uh, needed to have a missing tooth repaired. You can have a testimonial from someone whose dentures slipped and drove them crazy for years. And I went to Dr. Smith's office and they solved my problem <gasps> and just take their picture and put their little caption underneath of it. You can get up a, a man, let's say, um, who really doesn't have the time and nor the inclination to come back to your practice three, four or five times to get this whole case done. But you were able to do it in a reasonable amount of time and work within that person's schedule um, and fear. There's another one. <laughs> There's another big one that almost nobody talks about when they're talking about dental implants is combining fear um, uh, with the dental implanting, you know, implant process. So uh, there, there are, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, no, no. I'm just, we touched on the benefit based marketing Um and we touched on the vignettes in, the, in, in part one. And I want to make sure in part two that everybody understands what we're, you know, what we meant by that. That there are many, there's almost nearly endless combinations depending on the marketable attributes, the technology that you have in your practice. There's almost limitless mar- marketable attributes to fill a page or fill a mailer or fill an ad or what have you. There's almost limitless things to talk about on your Facebook page. Yeah. You know, uh, a a thing uh, that goes uh, to a particular age group, the older, the older folks, one of the the, the most wonderful things that they're so thankful for is now they can eat. (laughs) Yeah. They can eat what they want. They can actually taste their food. They don't have a, a plastic, uh, covering over their palate so that they can't taste anything. These are, these are huge, huge benefits. For, yes. For the implant market. And, and if they're not, you know, if they're not a candidate for implants, well, then you can, uh, you can promote if, if you're able to, in your practice, you can promote uh, your, uh, you know, like the fountain of youth dentures or 
or uh, some of these other uh, um, more cosmetic t- uh, type dentures. And so the, they're not going to lose out either way. If they don't have enough bone for a regular implant, maybe a, a mini implant uh, situation will work. A uh, bunch of different combinations there. You almost can't lose uh, in this area at all. So, so let's, let's say that we really did sit down and as a dentist and, and we, we really did consider, oh my goodness, yeah, look at all the different. And some of you will do implants right now. You probably heard these stories from your own patients. <laughs> I mean, you know, you come, they come back six months, 12 months, 18 months later, and they tell you stories. Hey, doc, I can taste my food again. Hey, doc, this is awesome. Look, it doesn't. Or, hey, doc, I, you know, what if it's a, a widower or, or maybe someone who was recently divorced? Hey, I'm, you know, I'm back on the dating scene again, right? Because Oh, yeah, big, I mean, big it, time. You know, the appearance is so much better or, or you know, I mean, it, oh, the, the life-changing pieces of that are, are nearly endless. So let's assume you have your list and you have, and there's plenty of things to talk about. And there's plenty of things to talk about without putting a, gross bloody video or a gross bloody picture somewhere right so where do you promote it well all right we went through last time we went through the internal i think we exhausted that um well i believe we talked about the external um senior mailers uh let me give you another um certainly a potential and we we always try to be as informative as we can on these podcasts. We try not to say it depends uh, on your market, but with dental implants specifically and specifically with Google AdWord campaigns, uh, we've seen them work wonderfully uh, to get implant patients into practices. And we've seen other markets struggle. So it's it's not as consistent as other media types um, or that dentists think it would be, but it can be. So it's definitely worthwhile, you know, considering. Ooh, ooh, Google AdWords. Uh, that's great. That's a great subject. Let let's uh, let's stop right there, Mark. Okay. Take a break and come back, and perhaps we can get in into that uh, very interesting subject a little bit more. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Hey, Mark, we should tell people about this new product we have, NPI Command. Ah, well, new, probably new to the podcast listeners, but not new to the customers who use it. So let me go through on the finer points. NPI Command is a system we use. It's an artificial intelligence system that creates decisions on where dentists, our clients, should put their pay-per-click money when they do Google pay-per-click ad campaigns. If you're someone who's already done them, then you're probably frustrated by the cost of the negative clicks. Well, if there's an artificial intelligence platform monitoring your negative clicks, you can see immediately how doing these on an artificial intelligence platform will allow for a faster build and the faster allocation of the advertising money to the places that are bringing in good clicks. Because with every PPC campaign, there's sources of bad clicks and sources of good clicks. And the whole idea is to throw all your money in the good ones and pull your money from the bad ones. So NPI Command is our PPC department. And it's not just a department of humans, it's an artificial intelligence platform as well. All righty, we are back. We were talking about uh, implants and the promotion of that service. And specifically, we were uh, sort of zeroing in here on Google AdWords, right, Mark? Yeah, and and again, I mean, uh, we really would need to analyze whether it's mail for you or AdWords for you or a different media type for you, depending on what we see in the analysis, you know, in your specific market. But having said that, um, Google AdWords can be um, a very good source of new implant patients. It depends on a lot of things. And, and, and like I said, before the break, I, we try not to say that it, it depends, but let's be real. I mean, it really does depend. That's why we have we have these initial analysis that 
um, that we do for AdWord or potential new AdWord uh, campaign clients. That's why we do them because we don't n- know. And, l- and let me give you an example. We've got a dentist that engaged us last week and beautiful, beautiful new practice in let's just say a town where lots of um, government is. And um, <laughs> we did it, you know, we did, she, she wanted to look and see which niches uh, she could or should promote uh, through Google AdWords. And so off we went and we did an analysis and if I asked a hundred Google AdWord campaign managers that worked with dentists throughout the U.S., if I asked a hundred of them if they thought this market would be very competitive or wide open, a hundred Google AdWord professionals would say, no, no way. That's a, a really competitive, it's going to be a really competitive market. I don't even have to look. I don't even have to do the analysis. I can just tell you it's going to be really competitive. And you know what? We were one of them. Before we did the analysis, we actually cons- did a consult with the doctor and said, hey, doc, <laughs> you know, we'll do the analysis, but I wouldn't expect implants to be very high on your list of, you know, of uh, priorities, uh, priority uses of your AdWord budget. We think it's going to be too competitive. Well, lo and behold, when we get it, the analysis back, um, mm-hmm we find that there are dentists that are advertising on Google AdWords in her market. So that was correct. We were correct there. We also found that there were dentists in Texas advertising in Google AdWords for implant patients uh, from, let's just say the Metro DC area. We We thought that was a little odd. And then there was a um, a prostodontic association, an association wasn't even a, like a, it wasn't even a dentist. It was just you know an association who was paying for AdWords. So what ha- what we saw when we did our analysis was well for implant related search terms and phrases. Some of these dentists were 20, 30, 40 miles away. One of them was from Texas. One of them wasn't even a dentist. (laughs) It was an organization, right? (laughs) So we're sitting there going, oh my God, look at all these people who don't know the first thing about managing an AdWord campaign. And they're all managing it that way in this major metro area that almost everyone that does AdWords for a living will tell you that would have thought it was very competitive. Well, so we grab it. We're all excited, of course, because we we think, I mean, nuts. I mean, we found it's kind of like turning over a rock in a river and seeing a gold nugget, right? There's this big gold, yeah. gold nugget underneath this rock with the water <laughs> over it, sun shining on it. And we're like, yeehaw, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be great. So, and the other thing we find is we find the dentists were spending anywhere from 435 to I think it was $1,100 a month in this market for search terms and phrases that have anything to do with, you know, dental implants. And we know, we know what that means. We know that, that if we take a thousand or two and apply it to that same market and give consumers who are local to that office, not someone from Texas. Okay. Okay. If, 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 if we actually control the campaign, how many, how many more, how many more implant patients this dentist is going to get? Right. So uh, now, so then we went down to the other niches we went down. Well, we actually always put general dentistry and emergency dentistry in the list, but we went down into uh, Invisalign, sedation and cosmetics. And it was amazing to find how rich of an opportunity this was for as little money as we would have to have this client put out in order to, you know, start getting these phone calls. So anyway, here's, here's my point. My point is, is that Google AdWords can absolutely positively be 
um, or should be uh, one of the things you consider when um, making the decision that you're ready for some more implant patients for your dental practice. I'm not saying it's going to work in your market. I haven't analyzed. We haven't analyzed your market yet. Okay. And and I'm not going to, if you're in a competitive, if you even think you're in a competitive market, this lady thought she was in a competitive market and we thought she was in a competitive market and it ended up being that she wasn't. So what we're telling you is, is get the, get an analysis done. And what, and what, here, here's what that does. It actually, um, it actually prioritizes the niches that are available to promote in a, in a given market area. So in like in this lady's case, we had general dentistry, emergency dentistry, Invisalign, sedation, cosmetics, and implants. So I think we had six subjects and they're, they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. And the order they're put in is in number one is your, is your best chance of success because there's so few people promoting it and so few people promoting it correctly with so low of a budget, we ought to be able to penetrate that on AdWords in no time and begin to get you phone calls all the way down. You know, that's number one. Number two is, you know, a little more competitive. Number three is a little more competitive yet. You see how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. That way, before you even start uh, promoting your implants, um, you know whether or not AdWords is even viable. Because uh, I tell you what, there's a boatload of people out there wasting timid budgets in markets that they don't even, they shouldn't even be in them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I talk about a waste of money. You know, that, that's why it doesn't, it doesn't bother us to, to, you know, actually charge a small nominal fee for, for a, a look-see because without it, you're just inviting the dentist to throw his or her money away. Well, yeah, but it, I mean, it takes a couple of weeks to get these, in, you know, and it, it yeah. takes labor. It takes, you know. It's a study. Know, yeah, you and I aren't going to retire <laughs> on oh. 95 bucks, <laughs> but, we, but we can pay our team, and and they they really do a good job at um at laying it all out. Anyway, so uh, implants. One of the things, one of the venues you can use um, in in your perhaps in your market is Google AdWords uh, to promote implants. You can use Facebook ads to promote implants. We've been wildly successful with senior mail. Senior mail is basically, it's a mailer. It's uh, very tightly targeted. Um, age, household uh, owner age, and uh, income, credit worthiness, uh, distance from the practice. And then we basically just build the four, five, six, or seven, you know, um, attributes of your practice that uh, would, would be attractive to well, hell, people my age, I'm 57, right? <laughs> so why not, yeah. right? And then you just keep delivering them to those people until they have a need. And uh, all of a sudden, boom, there you go. Um, there's, yeah. There are other aspects or other ways. We went, we, we, we went a little bit into the organic, the internal promotion. Um, we talked a little bit about in part one, we talked a little bit about um, what, when you're starting out with dental implants, uh, at least all the dentists that I've ever been involved with like to take their time, spread out their cases, oh, and, they, and they get a little um, picky, you know, with their cases. And if they get one that you think is a little bit above their pay grade, you know, or their experience level, they like to bring in their instructor and have them, you know, watch and so on and so forth. So, you know, again, before you go external, before you go external in mail or before you go external in AdWords, before you go external in anything, um, you know, you should probably be able to get those first 35 or 40 cases just from your own existing patient base. You ought to be able to find all the patients in your, in your practice who are over, let's say, 45. You ought to be able to create a mailer just for them or an email. Well, we've got the, all the content for you and get that information out to them um, and get your first few cases up underneath your belt 
and then then go out into the mail or into AdWords. Or we have clients that do all of it. They do, you know, our warning there would be don't ever over promote a niche at the harm of the family side of your practice. Obviously, unless you're a periodontist or an oral surgeon or, you know, if you're a general dentist um, and you have a budget of whatever, $50,000 a year, don't spend 49999 on implants <laughs> and, and a dollar trying to get one, you know, family, good, solid family patients into the practice. That would yeah, be- that, That's what we call uh, the niche trap. We talked about that before. You don't want to trap yourself as just the implant dentist. Exactly. Besides that, um, enjoy. I mean, we, yeah. Howie and I have, you know, become, you know, good friends with clients over the years and uh, watched them, you know, through their 30s and 40s and watched them get to the point where, you know, they, they begin doing, you know, implants or sedation or sleep apnea treatment or what have you. You know what we should do for one of our next podcasts? We should start talking about sleep apnea treatment too, Allie. Well, yeah. Yeah, let's do. We had Kent Smith, Smith on one, one time. We didn't really talk about it in, in detail with him, but uh, yeah, let's do. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's all we've got for you for today. Be sure and tune in next time. And uh, we're really glad that you're out there listening. Thank you very much. Bye now. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can find more podcasts on our YouTube channel, on Stitcher, and iTunes. Also on our websites, dentalwebcontent.com and newpatientsinc.com.